Minecraft's Two Wheeled Adventure. I'm Brian Buck. Today we're going to be going over a couple things. We're going to be redoing my old park tool stand. We are going to be changing the grips out on my bike, as well as the cranks, sprocket, and the rear cog on my profile uh, cassette hub. Um, let's get started. Park tool stand in probably like 2004, 2005, and it never came with these rubber grip jaw protector things on there. Um, the guy I bought it from was like, yeah, these are available for like just a few bucks, and me being a kid, I took the time to paint it, but of course I didn't take the extra time to spend $5 or $10 to, to change these. So anyway, I have the new ones here. I'm going to go ahead and get changed on those. I did realize that I bought the wrong ones, so they're not actually going to fit, but uh, we'll make it work. Actually, the replacement pieces that go in here. I got the entirely two short ones. So they said, I thought it was the 1960 part number that was on their site, but um, it's pretty short. So. Instead of buying new ones or anything like that or cutting it down, I'm just going to trim one of these off. One of these little, I don't even know what you post things. And uh, just kind of make it work in there. Because I'm not going to have to use it really tight to clamp it. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. These actually didn't even work as I had hoped. So I ended up having to trim off both posts to make it work. Which is okay. I'll just have to buy the regular ones some other time and make sure that I get the, the right length. But um, for today, what we're doing is going to work just fine. Alright, so now we've got the bike mounted in there. You want to make sure that you never do it too tight, uh, especially if you're working on a mountain bike or something like that, because it can crush the tubing. Um, you have to put a lot of force in there, but um, it is possible. And I don't think they recommend if you're ever working on a carbon bike to ever clamp it um, in one of these very tight at all. What I'm going to do is go ahead and take off the master link. So we got to locate it. You can always see the master link right there. Um, you want to make sure that the, the drive, the back of this, is always going towards the front of the bike or whichever way the drive is. So you don't accidentally unclip it. Um, it's very rare, but it's always just a good idea. So, and you can you can undo it really easily with just a set of pliers, um, putting it on this back here, and uh, that pin, and you just kind of push it. So, I'm gonna go ahead and take the chain off now and get started on removing the crank. I was trying to do that one-handed. I don't think I'm gonna do it, but you can see how. <laughs> easy it is to just unclip oh there we go okay yep and you just kind of you know work it around and it'll come right off Base plate there and then you're gonna have your final little piece there and then the chain will come right off and you can just go ahead and push that aside i think i should have mentioned before um if you do plan to change your pedals or transfer them over to the new crank you want to do that before you have all that free play in there um because it makes it really really difficult um to get it while you're on the stand to do it in this case i'm going to switch over to a new set of pedals so it doesn't really matter to me but you would want to take it off the cranks before you do the redline flight twos i think they are um i want to say there may be like an 04 version um i had ones before that were single bolt pinch bolt design on there and that was uh that was really old so it's time to kind of get this this is also a 42 tooth gearing which was fine um back whenever i was racing um riding quite a bit but I'm going to go down to a 36 tooth and then we're going to have to change the rear. We're going to go to a 13 tooth on the rear. This is actually a 14 tooth. So, um, and it should be really a good setup for skate park and the racetrack. Crank should slide right out. Perfect. Nothing to it. Wow, that's been on there a long time. So you can see now, I have a Euro bottom bracket. Uh, you want to go through and just kind of clean that up a little bit. It's a sealed bearing, so you really don't need to grease it, but just to make sure everything in there is, is good and clean before you put the new crank in. That's what we're going to be putting in. What's really special with me is that I did go ahead and opt for the all titanium hardware. So this is a titanium spindle. It's so ridiculously light, and it has the titanium bolts on the ends, too. Uh, when I was putting this together, I just really wanted to make something that was really light, uh, but also usable at the skate park. This also, um, I opted in. I, some of this stuff is just ridiculous, you know? I think that bolt to go to a titanium over the chromoly was like $16, and the spindle was like $78 or something. So it is a significant jump, but I really wanted to spend a lot of extra um, time to get this right on this build. And the other side about that too is that whenever I was a kid and I was racing, I had to fund everything myself. So I always wanted the titanium parts and always the trick parts for my bike and to go faster, but I couldn't really ever afford it. So now I'm at a point where, you know, I can do it. I don't really have the time always to ride like I could whenever I was a kid, but um, I do have a little bit more money these days, 
which is really nice. Um, so I wanted to spend it. I wanted to spend um, just to get that nice little um, upgraded piece. I'm running into right away, snafu, that's for all you uh, you mid-school guys out there if you catch that reference, but um, the first snafu I'm running into right away is that the titanium spindle I ordered is for a freestyle bike. Pulling this out, I realized that my old um, crank spindle was actually for a race bike. There's a little bit of a difference there. I think it'll be okay because I got the cone washers and that's pretty thick, so I think that'll be fine. Um, but just kind of disappointing. I have a Frankenstein as to where it is a technically a race bike, but it also has a lot of freestyle geometry. So getting parts for it and the right things are a little bit difficult and I must have just mismeasured. Mis -measured. All right, so the next snafu I ran into, this does not work. That spacer is not gonna work with this cone spacer, which sucks because I paid extra for it. So um, I guess I could just reuse the ones from the old crank, but I was really hoping to have these. They say there's a free Euro, but I think it's probably for a mid. So we'll try and make it work, but oh well. And I do have the sprocket on there. Um, I actually kind of made a huge mistake when I, before I was filming this, but there's a spacer that goes in here. Um, you can kind of see it there. Um, and it really is a, it's a cool piece, but the problem that I had was I had put the sprocket in the oven to try to expand it and that washer in the freezer to try and get it to cool down. And I turned it to 550 for about 20 minutes and it cooked all of the anodization off and actually turned it kind of gold. So I had to go ahead and come back in and spray it. it wasn't a huge deal, but kind of made me feel like an idiot. So um, anybody that's out there. Also, the other thing is, if you're not familiar with Profile, it has these splines. I think there's 64 of them. Uh, I believe that came over from race, their race car technology. And it lines up with their um, crank arms. So that was actually invented, I believe, for their steering wheels um, on Indy cars or something is what I had heard. So not 100% sure on that, but it pushes on there. It's a really great system, but man, it's frustrating sometimes. So they give you a little tool with it and it actually slides um, into these little grooves. I usually don't use any grease, um, and I noticed that this time whenever I ordered one, it actually didn't send any. So I'm going to get ready and push this crank arm on now. So here's the actual tool that they give you, the crank puller. Um, and you just kind of line. I like to get it started a little bit, you know, and get it on the splines. And you want to just make sure that it's kind of pushed on there. And then it's straight before you get to really putting a lot of pro uh, power on it. So... That just threads in there. And I just kind of get it started a little bit with my hand. And then once it starts to get tight, you can go ahead and really crank down on it. And it's always good to just kind of check it once in a while because you don't want it to pull all the way you want to make sure you have a lot of room left over for your other side. So I just kind of pull it off. And just kind of check it. We still have plenty of room. There's about a quarter inch there. So I wouldn't be afraid to do a couple more turns on it before you switch over and go to the other side. So one of the things that was always the bane of my existence was making sure that I got these crank arms lined up just right. So I was always afraid I was going to be off by one spline, but I think we're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and push the other side on now then. Right, so we got the cranks on there and I got to tell you, I don't think that this could have come out any better. This is just awesome looking on there. So really clean look, really updated look. And I checked the spindle heights there or spindle weights, excuse me. Um, and they're crazy different from the, the chrome molly one that was on there before. So next thing we're going to do is actually change this cog. So this is a profile mini. 
um, cassette. Uh, it was new, I don't know, quite a while ago, but uh, we're going to go ahead and change that, that tooth um, or that cog out for uh, one tooth smaller. And uh, I don't have a chain whip, so I've got an idea to, um, to pull that off without having to use one. So we'll see how it goes. All right. Cool. So I actually saw this trick um, on an internet video of a couple of guys doing it for an oil filter for like a truck in like, I don't know what country, but I'm gonna hopefully do the same. So I'm gonna wrap the chain around and I'm gonna run it because the cog that's on there, the cassette's gonna wanna spin while you're trying to back off this nut, the nut that holds the cassette on or the cog on. So you're just gonna run it through one end of the box and wrench. That one's not big enough, so hang on. You're gonna run it through the box end wrench. One side. If I can get it here. One side there. And then the other end of the chain. And you're gonna pull it tight. And you're gonna hold it like that. And then just slip this over it. And so that was loose because I actually did it the wrong way. But that's how it would go. That's how it would go. So it worked exactly as planned, I mean. So then that cog is gonna come off. So this is a 14 tooth, it just slides on the spines, the splines there. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit, and then I'm gonna put on the 13 tooth. So this is actually an aluminum one. Let's see, let's make sure it goes right on. Come on. Aha! So it's actually aluminum because so it comes in that cool gold color. Uh, and it just slides right on. And you'll have your lock ring there. And this time you can actually tighten it. It's got really fine threads though, so you want to be really careful. But you can actually tighten it theoretically because the cassette is going to actually go the other way now. So it, as you tighten it, it'll actually tighten. And then it just goes right back on. If I can ever get it started. There we go. So it started now. Oops. And it's aluminum, so you don't want to over tighten it, but just get it tight, nice in there. And then it's ready to go back on. The last thing to do is cut the chain to length, and uh, I probably won't go over that because most people know how to cut a chain, and uh, fit it on there, and then get it tight. So, be right back. <laughs> this is never gonna get easy. <clears throat> Hi, welcome to Ryan Buck's Two Wheeled Adventure. Rocky, what are you looking at? I'm just trying to make a video, man. My dog is just mean bugging me right now. All right. <clears throat> I look a little fat. That's all right. Just stretch your shirt out. Rocky, <laughs> it's okay, buddy. <laughs> He's very confused. All right, so now we've got the chain on. We got it cut. We got the cranks. Um, the pedals are back on. The sprocket's been changed. Everything is good to go. Ran through everything. It's smooth. It's all aligned. It's really good. I think I'm gonna save the grip changing video for another time. I got a, kind of an idea I want to do with that. So. That's pretty much all I got for today. So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. As always, I'm Brian Buck, and this is my two-wheeled adventure. Thanks for watching.